I um, met Julian Co. from the To Drop Explodes. Julian Aviator Jacket Co. Julian the Rockstar Co. in Dublin. And um, he gave me the keys to his apartment and um, we go move into his house in um, Liverpool. So across from Sefton Park. And um, he taught me how to be a rock star. He taught me things like um, always wear your backstage pass on the inside, never the outside. I had tried to go to Trinity, um, yeah, in Dublin, and I, I had gotten in and I wanted to take theology, but I had my guitar with me and my Iggy Pop book and my Patti Smith poetry book and my Fleur Dommage and you know, my little kit to run away and be a rock star. Well, I first felt like a rock star when I started my own hairstyle. And um, it's a Julian Cope thing again, because he said you're not a rock star until you start your own hairstyle. So yeah, I did. And um, well, I don't own it, but I owned it at the time. And it's when girls let the black roots grow out in their blonde hair and have the little slides in, but it's all got to be very organic, you know? It all has to be very organic. You can, you can plan it, you know? Um, but, uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, the music is insanely important, of course. And, uh, you know, is she pretty on the inside? Is she pretty from the back? You know? really just own it. Oh, I'll always be a rock star. It's uh, part of who I am. I will be a rock star until my teeth fall out. Um, you know, I had a band that was on equitable terms with, uh, with Pretty on the Inside with Nirvana. I think I had the better band and a lot of people say I'm much better. And, uh, in the bleach era, and um, and then Nirvana went, <laughs> and they got huge, huge, and uh, I was resentful. Well, no, I wasn't resentful. I was covetous, and no, I was I I was wasn't resentful. I was covetous. But I watched him in Amsterdam, and he wrote. Uh, rape me and dumb and in 20 minutes and I'd never seen anything like it. Well, I went and bought him the Fleur de Mal and I went and bought him the Drunken Boat and I bought him a, th a thesaurus and I threw them at him and I said, you're going to have to up your game in the lyrics department. Uh, you know, because that's where I had him, but in the tunes department, um, it just would come to him, you know, like some sort of channel. I don't think he would have written those songs without me, you know. I was very helpful and musy in that way, because I was very competitive. Well, he, well, he played his guitar upside down, you know, because when you're poor, um, you can't afford a left-handed guitar, so he played his guitar upside down, and I couldn't really see what he was doing, or I probably could have done it better, but I did learn a lot from his simple melody. So that's why Live Through This was such um, a, a better album because um, than, than uh, Pretty on the Inside, like the, with the melange of um, sounds and really good lyrics, um, but it didn't have the melody of um, Live Through This because I was competing with Kurt's um, melodies, you know. Um, I waited till he was in the closet and could absorb the music from him that way, and I so I didn't need him anymore, you know. I, I had just become such a huge um, celebrity after his death. That's why um, Celebrity Skin was, you know, it was a, a successful album, but it didn't have the melody, and I, it doesn't, it, no, it doesn't escape me, no. It's kind of more the, like Fleetwood Mac, you know. Uh, 
um, some kind of a comment on the shiny California wanting to um, reckon with that kind of that level of fame that I have been wanting my whole life. That's why I had to kill him. And so the biggest thing about mainstream fame uh, was always, always, always having to be well dressed and always, always having to be groomed and having to be a soccer mom. And, you know, it was really done with the grunge things. I wanted to be a movie star and I just kind of changed my whole personality and voice in the public eye. You know, having to go to Madonna and being like, can I still go to the grocery store? Do I need to go take a bodyguard or, and you know, doing the whole celebrity center with Tom Cruise and oh, Scientology. Um, yeah, it's a little weird. Everything's fine, honestly. I um, wrote some great songs out of it. I don't really remember, but you know, well, I you had some bad people in my life, so he really wanted me to take the ethics class, but you know, it wasn't really for me. Not ethics, at least, so I only went a couple of times. I am doll parts, doll skin, and doll heart, really. Is there anything I wouldn't sing about? Well, no, but, well, I wouldn't write, um, I have, I, I wouldn't do straight up codependent love songs. Um, I might write some hate songs of love twisted in, you know, that's all I, I know and I, I need to write from my experience. It's um, just a blockage, you know, I can't, I can't write a love, a ballad, a love song because I just don't know how. I mean, how would I? I don't know what love is. It's, um, you know, oh no, I totally love, I absolutely loved him. I mean, he was the best. He gave me everything. Oh, what was our relationship like? Um, uh, so, I, well, yeah, it was a relatively short amount of time, you know, it was four years. Um, oh, no, it was four. And, um, yeah, and I, I'm still talking about it 20 years later. So, yeah, I had to deal with all of the, you know, um, a talentless and a drug addict and you know I'm not a good mother and um, you know being the, a widow of such a, a, a public suicide um, is a suicide someone close asked why do you so much crap it's the villainous murderous um, villainous rock star archetype and it's because I'm a strong woman because I don't do anything to deserve any of that um so that's what it is you know i just am a strong woman and that's what it is the important thing anyway is francis and um i live a block away from her because um you know she, the well she's a very strong-willed girl and um i didn't lose custody it was really kind of you know it's a mutual decision and um she's very private Oh, she's fine, you know, she's a, a ill, but Nirvana Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is next week, and I wasn't going to go. I was going to see if I could, you know, if she would let me in over there, And um, but then I found out that it's televised and open to the public, so I really need to be there as an important part of Nirvana. It's Nirvana getting inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and it would have been cheesy 20 years ago, but uh, ever since Patti Smith demanded to get in, and Stipe, and now it's cool. Um, so what would Kurt think about it? Well, he would, he would like it now. I know he would. I, I, I try to speak for him as much as possible. No, he wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been in an ironic way. No, he would have liked it. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go. And not only am I going, I'm getting up on stage with Francis and Chris and Dave, which I, I haven't seen in 
in 20 years, you know, it's Chris and Dave. And Chris and Dave up on stage, the guy, the, the, the play for cards. So, um, no, no, it's gonna be great. I'm going to wear a crown and it's, it's going to be very regal and, and France is going to get up on stage and, um, Kurt can't be there, so I'm going to be, you know, his spokesperson here on art. Uh, you know, I wasn't going. I really, I, I wasn't going. But then my manager said, you know, it's what widows and kids do. Um, so I wasn't going, but Frances is really excited about it. You know, she, she really wants to go, so I'm going to go and um, I'm, I'm wearing a tiara and it's not going to come off. And, um, you know, it's 20 years since, since Kurt killed himself, so I'm gonna go.